everybody. Thank you so much to the newest subscribers and please do subscribe because right now I have that free giveaway going on. Make sure you watch that video. If you're watching this after February 11th, I apologize the giveaway has ended but I probably will be doing more in the future so please subscribe and watch all the videos. Now in my opinion there's nothing more alarming other than predators than when you go out to your coop and you find chickens that are struggling to breathe and they're coughing and maybe their eyes are bubbling. Today we're talking respiratory <coughs> illnesses. Now I have dealt with this quite a few times. There was a couple of chickens that I got when I got them, their eyes were bubbling, they were sneezing really bad. Well, what causes a chicken's eyes to bubble or foam up? Some people might not even realize that that's possible. This happens because when a chicken's breathing is compromised, they try taking oxygen in through the eye. So, there are three main chicken diseases as far as respiratory goes. Three really bad ones, and I'm going to talk about all of those three and I'm also going to tell the differences between the two but the first thing that you need to rule out is other issues that might be causing them to sneeze or have trouble breathing. One main thing would be if there is mold present. Check your coop, check the surroundings, make sure that there is no mold growing anywhere in there on the walls even in your wa drinking water. Check everything to be sure things are clean. Also rule out that your coop has good ventilation because if too much moisture accumulates when they're in the coop at night, that could also make them sick. So if you ruled out those two things, then they might have a respiratory illness or disease. Most of them are viral. I personally hear, after research, figured that I have what's called MG. This is shortened. There's a longer version. I'll put that up here. I like to sometimes go old school on my videos with the old whiteboard. How did I figure that I had MG in my flock? Well, as you can see here, my chickens that were sick had foamy bubbles coming from the eyes. They had sticky nostrils sometimes and they would have a little bit of yellowish discharge coming out. A couple of them had one swollen eye to the point where it would be almost swollen shut. There was a little bit of discharge there and a lot of sneezing going on. It can be normal for a chicken to sneeze. Sometimes they just sneeze here and there to get dust out of the nostrils and things like that. But if it's repeated over and over again, then chances are that they are sick. Now, in order to know for sure which disease you're dealing with, you can have testing done. You can send a dead chicken out for a necropsy. And if you live here in Wisconsin where I am, I do have the phone number for UW-Madison and the person that you would contact in order to get the testing done. Sometimes, depending on the disease, you can also do a swab test on a live bird. But the key thing to that is to make sure that you send the swab out early. If you start treating your bird with some sort of medication, and they start getting better, they might not find the illness on the swab. Testing for things like this, I don't do here because it's just impossible. I do have a microscope, but it doesn't help me with things like this or bacterial testing and, and things like that. I mostly use my microscope for um, checking for parasites and uh, coccidiosis. Now, another respiratory disease is IB. This is more of a coughing and chirping, decrease in egg production, and loss of appetite, and less drinking of water. 
This also can char cause discharge from the eyes or nasal passages. I ruled this out for my flock mainly because they were not coughing or making weird noises. It was just the sneezing that I had going on here. Another disease is called coryza. This causes facial swelling, diarrhea, sticky discharge, which can have a foul smell to it most commonly. I didn't notice any sort of smell coming from any of my birds, so I ruled that one out here too. This illness can last anywhere from three days to months. It also causes rattled breathing. Now when I go outside and my birds are sneezing, and I don't know if it's just like I said, they're trying to clear out their, their nasal passages, I go ahead and I pick the bird up and I put their face right by my ear and I just listen. I listen for any sort of gargling going on, any sort of rattly breathing, things like that. Another thing you can check is if you have a stethoscope, you can pick the bird up and on the side right under the wing, listen for any rattled breathing. It'll kind of sound like a clicking noise when you listen closely. Now there's two main drugs that you can use to try and treat these diseases. Now for me and my experience with what I think is MG here, MG doesn't usually affect the whole flock and I'll just have some sick birds here and there. Um, sometimes it, it'll, it won't spread throughout the whole entire flock and it will be something that will just come up occasionally Mainly for me, it happens when, sorry about that, <laughs> mainly for me, I see it when there's major weather changes, which is a stressor for them, so I'll see it pop up again, mainly in the spring and in the fall. So, there is Thailand, and there's also Denegard that I have used to try and treat my respiratory illness here. Tylen comes in a soluble powder that you mix into the water. Now if you're going to use this, you have to have to add some sugar. I do about one to two tablespoons per gallon or add some honey because it tastes so sour and nasty. They just won't drink enough to get better. And trust me, it does taste nasty because I accidentally got it in my mouth once and it's horrible. Um, there is a Tylen 50 injectable that you can use. Now, I did try this and it didn't really work too well as far as getting rid of the symptoms here. I try to stay away from injections. Um, I, I can do it. In fact, I'm diabetic. I take injections all the time. Um, but... If you do it incorrectly and you hit a nerve or something like that, the bird can die. And that did happen here. So I just feel really guilty now and I, I shy away from injections. But a lot of people do it. I have injected my turkeys before with no problem. Another thing here is Denegard. Now this also goes into the water. I do add honey with that, and I have a, I've had a lot more luck with the Denegard. And the thing about this is there's no withdrawal time. As far as medicating a bird and not being able to eat the eggs, it's okay to still eat the eggs while you dose with this. And this is something that can be used as a preventative. So what I do is, if I go out there and I see some birds sneezing and I think my what I think is MG is popping up again, I'll go ahead and use the preventative dose and then it's fine. I don't, I've had a lot of luck with this. The birds get better. I usually don't see it again. Now the preventative dose says right on the bottle here, one and a half teaspoon per gallon, three to five days. And the treatment dose is three teaspoons per gallon, again, three to five days. So those are the things that I've tried. You know, some people will say, 
oh, Thailand worked for me, why didn't it work for you? Well, I think it depends on what disease you're treating. Certain medications only treat certain diseases and some work better than others for certain things. So I think it depends on what you're dealing with, if you're getting the dosage right. and how Now, along with those medications, I also do the homeopathic remedy that is on my Merrick's disease video. So I'll go over what those vitamins and minerals are, but please watch the Merrick's video because the amount that I use is in that video, along with a lot of other good information. So basically these vitamins and minerals, what they do is they boost the immune system and they attack any free radicals in the body. I have Pau Diarco, Andrographis, Curcumin, Echinacea, Cranberry that has vitamin C already in it. Vitamin C is great for trying to combat these issues in the birds. Now again, don't think that you can give vitamin C by giving oranges because citrus is really bad for them. It can be toxic. Also, olive leaf. Now again, this homeopathic remedy is in my Merrick's video. Now, I'll tell you, I had a bird so sick with this respiratory illness I have here that she was sneezing out blood. I went out in the coop and behind her or next to her on the roosting pole was like this mucusy, bloody mess. I thought for sure this bird's a goner. But after doing the Denegard plus the homeopathic stuff, took about three days. What I would suggest is whichever one you use, even if you're going to use something like tetracycline or duramycin, if you're using it and after two to three days they're getting worse or there's no improvement, I would move on to something else and I would try one of these two that I mentioned. So that's my experience with respiratory illness. Haven't seen much of it lately. So any questions or again if you're from Wisconsin and you need some testing done, you need that phone number, just email me. Sarah F is in Frank. My middle name's not Frank. Sarah F Harvey at gmail.com and I will help you get in touch with somebody that will help you out. Thanks for watching. Again, please subscribe. Appreciate it very much.